The Bharatiya Janata Party is perhaps India's most dominant political force today. The party has governed India since 2014, winning the biggest single party majority ever since 1984 when the Rajiv Gandhi led Congress swept the Lok Sabha polls. Then in 2019, with posters lining every street and corner with Narendra Modi's face, BJP outdid themselves again with an even greater majority. If political pundits are to be believed, we can expect another victory in 2024. BJP is also the richest party in India currently and has more state governments than any other party at the present. So, how did this happen? The Bharatiya Janata Party we know today came into existence on April 6th, 1980. But it didn't come out of the blue. Today, we know it as the party which is more or less the flag bearer of Hindutva. But its Hindu nationalist sentiment predates the party. Before we talk about the Bharatiya Janata Party of today, we need to revisit an era when the BJP did not even exist. We need to go back to a time when the soul of BJP was in another body, a party called the Bharatiya Jan Sangh. This historical story has everything, from suspicious and mysterious deaths to betrayal and jumping ships, hardcore Hindutva politics to political compromises. Let's talk about the Bharatiya Janata Party. Andhera chhatega, suraj niklega, kamal khelega. In October, we will go there and do a work there and we will make a temple there. The 370 had been sent to the temple that the Kashmir is a part of the country or not. 500 crore country and for 50 years, this country will be the number one of Hindustan. In Bhairat, with the full power of Bhairat, देश की जनता ने उसको सेवा करने का मौका दे दिया। अटल बिहारी वाजपेयी वाज़ द बॉस ऑफ़ पॉलिटिकल हिंदुइज़म एट दैट टाइम। हैड दिस विशी वाशी आइडिया ऑफ़ गांधीन सोशलिज्म एस देर कोर प्रिंसिपल व्हिच वाज़ नाइदर गांधीयन नॉर सोशलिस्ट। इवन मिस्टर पानी पुट एनॉर्मस अमाउंट ऑफ़ प्रेशर ऑन मिस्टर वाज not to demand or insist upon their resignation or Mr. Modi. There was no doubt that till Narendra Modi took over, the uh, remote control came from Nagpur. Narendra Modi is a product of a movement. India had changed. My simple answer is that India is changing. Nineteen fifty, India, a new country, an infant democracy merely three years old. The caretaker of this infant is a Jawaharlal Nehru-led cabinet of the Indian National Congress. In the same year, the constitution is passed, describing the nation as India, also known as Bharat, is a union of states. But before independence, a lot more was going on, other than simply wanting an end to the British colonial rule. As Ramchandra Guha, a leading historian stated in his book India After Gandhi at the cusp of the battle between preserving Hindu culturism and the adoption of modernism under the British colonial rule organizations like Hindu Mahasabha and Rashtriya Swayam Sevak Sangh came to the forefront in the late 1920s quote unquote between the late 1800s to 1920s Hindu nationalism, which was largely a socio-religious movement, mostly with upper caste Hindus, gradually gained momentum to potentially become a political tool. These organizations would later change Indian politics and culture, even a century later. All of this eventually leads to the formation of the Rashtriya Swayam Sevak Sangh in 1925, an organization that will be the backbone of BJP and all its predecessors throughout history. Around 1937, Damodar Savarkar, a Hindu Mahasabha leader, adopted a new strategy, Hindu homogeneity as a racial group, a way of uniting Hindus across castes as one group, one culture, one principle. Fast forward to 1950, Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru is the first Prime Minister of modern India. He is anglicised, speaks English, has a Western etiquette and is largely seen as secular. This last part hits the nerve of many, including some in his own cabinet. Most importantly, Shyama Prasad Mukherjee, the person 
who eventually goes on to be one of the founding fathers of the BJP RSS ecosystem. India, still reeling from the horrors of partition, is divided along communal lines. The riots and killings are still fresh in the minds of those displaced during the partition. At the stroke of the midnight hour, when the world sleeps, India will awake to life and freedom. Another section is reliving the brutal killing of Bapu or Mahatma Gandhi. Our beloved leader, Bapu as we called him, the father of the nation, is no more. It can be debated whether the Hindu nationalists are to be blamed for the killing of Gandhi. But the RSS influence on Gandhi's killer, or rather, the Hindu nationalism ideology of Nathuram Godse is evident. As a result, RSS is effectively banned in 1948. This ban is what later gives birth to the Bharatiya Jan Sangh, which would eventually evolve into the Bharatiya Janta Party that we know today. That was just a sneak peek because this episode is behind a paywall. If you want to hear the entire episode and more amazing podcasts like Let's Talk About and NL Hafta, subscribe to News Laundry. Support independent media, support News Laundry. The subscription model is something that keeps News Laundry afloat, but we need hundreds of thousands of people to completely transform the news ecosystem. So you pay for news, so it serves you. So click on the link with this video, subscribe to News Laundry and pay to keep news free. And garf se kaho, mere kharch par azad hai khabrein.